And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, what dreams do you have? A uh, lifetime supply of board games? Maybe you've always wanted the power of telepathy. Maybe you just want to live in a house that has neighbors that are nice and quiet. What is your dream? Well, this game's about achieving your dreams, except they come with stipulations. It's basically spoiling somebody else's dreams. Now, I know I've seen this played on the internet before where people make a wish and then you grant someone else's wish, just not in the way that they expect it. This is a similar feel to that. It's another one of the, the judge picks something type games that Apples to Apples kind of made famous. Let's see if this one's any good. At the beginning of the game, each player gets a board and a marker with an eraser on the board. The erasable markers, as with most games, the erasable markers in this game are cheap ones, and you'll need to replace them soon enough. But, you know, you can get erasable markers all over the place. There's also a timer, which you can or cannot use. So what happens is one person is chosen to be the judge. That person's going to draw a card. Now, this is going to be something that they're going to have. Perhaps, maybe they can now have the superpower of manipulating emotions. Or they have a lifetime supply of beef jerky. Or maybe they've achieved their dream of being a race car driver. Or achieved their dream of being a mentor. There's all different sorts of things that you can get on these different cards. You know, here, you grew up to be a truck driver. Lifetime supply of candy. You can communicate with amp uh, animals. Or you finally have achieved your goal of being debt free. You can teleport, a lifetime supply of alcohol, a soldier, live in a castle, lifetime supply of gasoline, etc. So let's say they got the one here, beef jerky. Then everybody else, I have a lifetime supply of beef jerky. That's amazing. But everyone's going to write a stipulation that makes it worse. They're going to then give these to the person next to the judge, and that person's going to read all them to the judge. So you have a lifetime supply of beef jerkies, but you have no teeth. You have a lifetime supply of beef jerky, but you're allergic to beef. Your lifetime supply of beef jerky, but that's the only thing you can eat. Your lifetime supply of beef jerky, but you're the president of PETA. You have a lifetime supply of beef jerky, but you were raised by cows. You have a lifetime supply of beef jerky, but shut the door. Okay, maybe not all of them make sense. So then they're going to pick one of these, which is the least desirable. So let's say this one was mine and lifetime supply of beef jerky. And I think I would pick, but sadly, that's all you can eat, because as much as I love beef jerky, that'd get very tiring after a while. Now, there's also a pile of bonus cards. One of these will be drawn beforehand, and then the judge is also, for example, picking the person who wrote the most offensive stipulation. So they'd pick two, and that person would get that card. Or maybe the most creative. Or... This one goes to the judge if a fulfilled dream or uh, occupation was announced. This one here to the most desirable one. Uh, then there's cards like take a card from the person with the most and give it to the person with the least. Either way, one person's going to get this. And then this bonus thing will do something weird, which might pick another one. The most unique, the most disgusting, the longest, the brainiest, the runner-up, etc. Or it might just take a card from someone and give it to somebody else. Then the next person is the judge and so on and so forth. You go around till everyone has been the judge twice. Whoever has the most cards is the winner of the game. Stipulations has a really fun concept. The idea of messing someone else's wishes up is fun. And this has the kind of concept where you're trying to write something funny that people will laugh at, but also trying to pick something that's horrible. Now, I highly recommend that you play with the variant that you can't, that the stipulation can't end in death. And you, there also is a rule that when you write something, you can't write the same thing for a future answer. And I think that's good because, you know, you shouldn't be able to die. I mean, you can eat. You have a lifetime, you have a lifetime supply of beef jerky, but when you eat it, you die. You, can, you have a telepathy, but every time you use it, you die. Okay, that gets old after a while. And so being creative is the, is the theme of this game. So in that instance, good. Yes, great. That differentiates this from all other games in this category. But... Here's the problem. First of all, this game runs into the same problem that all these type of games run into. Too few cards. There's 
an okay amount of the stipulation cards, and there's five things on each card, it's fine. But double it. Seriously, if you're going to make a game like this, have a ton of stuff, a content in it. Secondly, um, maybe make the rules clear for a party game. I think that's what I would do. But thirdly is those bonus cards. Those bonus cards are dumb. They really are. At first, I was like, wow, these are interesting because half of the bonus cards are good. I'm picking this one, and I'm also picking the, the weirdest one. I'm also picking the most disgusting one. That's fine. But then the ones is like, take a card from the person who has the most and give it to the person who has the least. What? What? Did anyone play test this? And at no point in line, someone said, this card is dumb. Or this card goes to the judge if they picked one of these two categories. Again, what? Someone gets a card for no reason? Doesn't that go against the spirit of creativity? Ah, so dumb. So annoying. So I would have also increased the number of these bonus cards and used a whole bunch of things. The one I, you know, they had like the longest, but also I might have won the one, you know, pick different cards. There's a, there's a, 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 a drawing game that has the same idea and they have many different things inside it. Why couldn't they have done that? So the game needs more cards. The bonus cards, half of them are horrifically bad and it's creative and fun and interesting, but I don't know that it is that differentiated from the other games in this genre. It's all to the whim of the judge, and that's fine, and I enjoy that. But a lot of people are going to be like, okay, this is still not too different from Apples to Apples and Say Anything and all these other games that do this exact same thing. So I like the concept. The execution's not as good as I'd want it to be. So I, 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 could, I could have fun playing this game. But I don't think that I would recommend it nonetheless. Dice Tower Judgment, cool concept, but misses the mark. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.